Right now, the ballots are now mostly set for the spring election. Who's on it and what voters need to know ahead of the election. Also, Wisconsin State Capitol received a bomb threat via email today, along with other state capitals across the country, what the FBI is now saying. And we are following one man's recovery journey after a horrific car accident nearly killed him. His new perspective on life going into the new year. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. As of today, the ballots are now mostly set for the spring election. Here with more details now is News 3 Now political reporter Will Keneally. Will? Yeah, well, Eric, we now know many of the contests that will seat for the 37 seat Board of Supervisors for Dade County this year. So right now there are 10 seats contested in the April ballot. You can see those uh, in green, hopefully in the graphic behind me in a second here. Uh, so now uh, two out of those 10 will have primaries coming up this February. Now that includes District 13 in downtown Madison. That's represented by Jay Brower, who has two challengers this cycle. Also on the east side is Melissa Ratcliffe's district. You may know her by name. She's in the state assembly. She also may take a run for state senate if Melissa Agard has to vacate that seat to become Dane County Board Executive. She's also deciding this year to step down entirely from the Dane County Board, similar to what Alex Jores and Mike Baer gave up their county positions last year. So in all, 10 county supervisors are declining to run this year uh, with some of their seats not contested this April. Uh, that's in the case where one person filed to run for their place. That turnover is about on par with what we see on the county board every cycle. So now some dates to keep in mind here. February 20th will be the primary for those two orange seats that you can see behind me. Downtown District 13 and then over on the east side with Melissa Ratcliffe. Uh, that uh, every, everyone else will run April 2nd, which is the same day as the presidential primary election in Wisconsin. Thank you. The weather quiet for now, but that could change by next week. Let's get a look at your first one forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti is out on the weather patio. Gary? Yeah, uh, skies are mostly cloudy today. It's been cloudy all day, but I'm starting to see at least a little bit of a break in the overcast, or at least the clouds trying to thin out here. Next week, though, we're continuing to keep our eye on a potential winter storm, mainly in the Tuesday through Tuesday night time frame. Accumulating snow, windy conditions, first warm weather alert day for that time. Visible cloud track shows plenty of clouds, but notice they are starting to thin out to our north, and that clearing will start to work its way south. Southward. There have been a couple of flurries in Dodge County and mainly areas uh, to the east uh, of our viewing area. Those are going to wind down pretty quickly. Low temperatures this morning, right around freezing here in Madison, 31. Uh, most areas were right around 30. Right now, temperatures are in the lower 30s after reaching highs in the mid 30s here in Dane County right now. Uh, 34 degrees in Cross Plains, 34 in Wanakee, and 33 degrees in Sun Prairie. Look for skies become partly cloudy later this evening as temperatures drop off into the middle 20s by 10 p.m. Later on, I'll take a look at the latest updates on that potential winter storm for next week. All right, Gary, thank you. Today, two explosions killed at least 103 people and injured another 141 in the city of Kerman, Iran. That's according to state media there. The blasts were near the burial site of military commander Qasem Soleimani. Today marks the fourth anniversary of Soleimani's death in a U.S. airstrike ordered by former President Trump at Baghdad International Airport. He was the head of an elite force of the Revolutionary Guard that handles Iran's overseas operations, which the U.S. deems a foreign terrorist organization. And Israel's war on Hamas is starting to reach beyond its borders now. That's prompting fear that the conflict will become regional and that global oil prices will then rise. A U.S. official says Israel is behind the assassination of Hamas Deputy Leader Saleh al aruri in Lebanon yesterday. His death has extremists in that country calling for revenge that could spread the conflict north of Israel just as the situation is heating up to the south. Iran is stationing a naval vessel in the Red Sea after the U.S. sank three Houthi boats there. And that group has Iran's backing and is threatening the vital trade route. If oil tankers can't get through the Red Sea, it could increase the cost of oil and drive up prices at the pump. The Wisconsin State Capitol was one of multiple state houses nationwide that received bomb threats this morning. State capitals in Michigan, Minnesota, and Mississippi all evacuated their offices because of those threats. The FBI called the series of threats a hoax this afternoon. Our Catherine Merck joins us live at our state capitol now with more on the response here in Madison. Catherine. 
Eric, the Wisconsin state capitol did not go on lockdown or evacuate like other states did as a result of this threat. Today, the Department of Administration spokesperson got back to us in an emailed statement saying that Capitol Police were aware of a generic email that was received and took measures to make sure the building and the people working inside of it were safe. She added, quote, we continue to be in close contact with law enforcement partners, including coordinating with federal agencies. So for those who are working inside the building, Building today. It was business as usual and building officials tell us that they're going to continue to respond accordingly. Reporting live from the Wisconsin State Capitol, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now. Catherine, thank you. Congress is set to get back to work next week and a bill to strengthen the country's southern border is on the top of the agenda. Today, a group of House Republicans led by the new speaker toured the border at Eagle Pass, Texas. Natalie Brand has more details from Capitol Hill. An all-time record monthly high of border crossings peaked in December, and today U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson and a group of Republicans visited one of the busiest entry points in the country, Eagle Pass, Texas. We have over 7 million illegal encounters at the border, nearly 2 million known gotaways, and that doesn't count the many that are undetected. Border officials told CBS News agents were spread so thin that they could only guard around four miles of border in the area around Eagle Pass, leaving over 90 percent unpatrolled. The president can and should act now. This doesn't require legislation. It requires leadership. On Capitol Hill, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said his members are the ones trying to craft a deal. It's very nice that they have a trip to the border, but the only way to solve this is here working in a bipartisan way. A bipartisan group of Senate negotiators worked through the holiday recess. The White House says it's open to significant changes to asylum and border security laws in exchange for funding for military aid for Ukraine and Israel. We get it. We understand what's happening at the border. That's why there's negotiations happening on the Senate side where Republicans and Democrats deal with this issue. Meanwhile, four crossings along the U.S.-Mexico border will reopen Thursday. They were partially or fully closed last month because officials said they did not have the resources to process the sheer number of asylum seekers. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The number of migrants apprehended at the border dropped to 4,000 a day, down from the record high of about 10,000 a day last month. President Biden will have his first official campaign event this Saturday, set to deliver a speech covering democracy and freedom in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, on the third anniversary of the January 6th Capitol insurrection. The president is expected to pick up the pace of his political events in the coming months as he faces a possible rematch against Donald Trump. Meanwhile, Trump trying to get back on the primary ballot in the state of Maine. The former president has asked that state's courts to step in. In his filing, Trump accuses Maine's Democratic Secretary of State Shenna Bellows of bias. Trump is also dealing with 14th Amendment related challenges to his ability to run for president in numerous other states. That includes Colorado, where he was taken off the ballot. Today, Republican presidential hopeful Nikki Haley took questions at a town hall in Kingston, New Hampshire, some regarding Donald Trump. During the town hall event, the former South Carolina governor was pressed by a voter on whether she would uphold the Constitution and asked if she would consider being Trump's running mate. This is what she had to say about a potential run as vice president. Okay, let me put your mind at ease. First of all, I don't play for second. I never have, and I'm not going to start now. <laughs> Secondly, we are going to win. No doubt about it. Turn off your TV. These political pundits are trying to tell you what to do, and we've been on the ground. I know the momentum in Iowa, the momentum in New Hampshire, they want something different. They're pushing for it. And well, Iowa's Republican voters will gather in less than two weeks to caucus for their presidential candidates. Right now, Donald Trump, the clear front runner, leaving the other candidates to battle for second place. Healthcare workers from Planned Parenthood clinics across the state have joined forces to establish a union. The goal is to foster long-term sustainability for the organization's labor force in the face of political attacks. In a press release, one nurse practitioner said, quote, we proudly form this union to improve our ability to care for the patients we see each and every day. Collective bargaining will center our experience, expertise, and passion from the front lines to mold the way we deliver care. I chose to provide health care at Planned Parenthood for a reason, and I've chosen to organize a union with my coworkers for that same reason. 
The patients, the work, and the workers deserve the best, end quote. Madison police are investigating reports of someone shooting a BB gun at a Metro bus late last night. It happened near the Woodman store on the west side on South Gammon Road, also on Schrader Road. About 11, the bus was struck by the BB gun as it was driving. There were no passengers inside. The driver of that bus was not hurt. Police are reviewing surveillance video in the area and continuing to investigate. If you have any information regarding this incident, you are asked to contact the Madison Police Department. And Madison Police are investigating after someone robbed a woman outside Ho-Chunk Casino on New Year's Day. Officers were called there about 2.15 in the morning. A woman and her husband reported they were walking to their vehicle when a stranger approached and asked for a ride. When they said no, the suspect stole the woman's purse and took off running. Police did not provide a description of the suspect. Drones are changing the way departments police. While it's estimated hundreds of agencies already use drones, a small but growing number are also using the technology to answer emergency calls. Mark Strassman visited one community near Atlanta to see how they work and hear how police are responding to privacy concerns. This is 911. What's the address? On the edge of Atlanta, a 911 call. Check on a suspicious person. All right, launch it. In Brookhaven, Georgia, the police first responder, a drone, racing by air to answer the call along with patrol officers and cruisers. It allows us to either escalate a police response or de-escalate it based on the things that we're seeing here in the camera view. Lieutenant Abram Ayana led the launch of the department's DFR program two years ago. DFR for drone first responder. The drones don't patrol, they respond. It's aerial intelligence relaying visuals about fast-changing circumstances on the ground. Murray, stop right there. To officers flying the drones and communicating with patrol units. Do me a favor, just put both your hands on the steering wheel. Even on a routine traffic stop, the drone becomes their backup. It's a relief that I know someone else is still looking after me. I don't actually have a physical backup. A big advantage, response time. On the ground, Brookhaven police typically need four and a half minutes to respond to an emergency call. But by drone, without having to mess with traffic, in the vast majority of cases, that response time drops to 90 seconds. The drone's there. Ayanna showed us how that quick response has paid off. Get on the ground. As this officer arrested an armed robbery suspect, a second suspect inside the store panicked. They'll run out the back of the CVS has no idea that there's a drone above him. He jumps another fence, he runs, jumps several more fences. The drone led officers right to him. And there he is appearing now. And he was captured without incident with a fraction of the time and a fraction of the resources that otherwise would have been expended. Brookhaven's police department is young, only a decade old. This drone program might not fly in much of America. A lot of police agencies have a tougher time because they have to deal with issues around privacy and transparency. Um, trust. Trust is a big thing. Trust is a big thing. We don't use drones in Brookhaven as a crime control tactic. And that removes any concern for profiling or any of those concerns about policing certain areas and certain demographics differently. With a bird's eye view, suspects still can run, but they can't hide. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Brookhaven, Georgia. And after the break, we'll get a look at your first warn forecast with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. And pickup truck owners, beware, there's a recall alert. You're going to want to stick around for that and more just ahead. And a rough day on Wall Street. The Dow Jones falls some 285 points. The Nasdaq down 174. S&P loses 38. And we'll be right back. Join Dr. Ashish M. Ravel on January 11th at 5.30 p.m. to learn about the causes of shoulder pain and pain relief options. To register for the free online educational talk, visit StoughtonHealth.com and click on Classes and Events. Thousands of our heroes face the difficult choice between keeping their heat and power on or facing homelessness. 21,000 Wisconsin veterans are living below the poverty line many impacted by physical or mental health challenges. Wisconsin loses three veterans to suicide every week. Together, our mission is to provide all struggling Wisconsin veterans with a critical survival safety net that keeps them safely in their homes. You can make a real difference by providing a donation to the Wisconsin Heat and Housing for Heroes Initiative. With 95 cents of every dollar donated, 
going directly to those right here in your community. Help by visiting www.heatforheroes.org or by calling 1-800-891-9276. That's 800-891-9276. This right here is confidence in a bottle. It makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Annette Figaro is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video, and all he uses is a small amount on a clean, dry face. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes. And I did this to my father. We were at home, so we applied it to his under eye bags, and let me tell you, we were so excited. In under 10 minutes, they visibly disappeared from view, and now it is literally part of both of our daily routines. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. This new year is the best time to try Plexiderm at our startup price of only $14.95. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Join Dr. Ashish M. Ravel on January 11th at 5.30 p.m. to learn about the causes of shoulder pain and pain relief options. To register for the free online educational talk, visit StoughtonHealth.com and click on Classes and Events. Coming up, over 30 families are going to become homeless. First reported just before Christmas, News 3 now revisits the residents and finds out what will happen to them. Plus, a remarkable tale of a local man's recovery after a traumatic accident. That's tonight at 6. Help St. Vincent de Paul and News 3 Now give neighbors in need a warm night's sleep. The last weekend in January, donate new or gently used blankets at St. Vinny's and local drop-off sites. Or give to the online blanket fund. Join us and recycle the warmth. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Ford is recalling more than 112,000 F-150 pickup trucks because of a rollaway risk. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says a rear axle hub bolt in some of the vehicles might break, and that could cause the truck to roll away when in park or lose drive power. The recall includes F-150s from 2021 through 2023 that are equipped with the trailer tow max duty package. Ford is working on a fix. The company says drivers who hear a clicking or rattling noise should take their vehicle to a dealership. Starbucks customers can now use their own cups for nearly all orders. The coffee chain has added the reusable cup option to drive through and app orders. Previously, it was only available for orders made in person. In the drive through line, customers just have to tell the barista they have their own mug. When they order, the cup will then be collected at the pickup window using a contactless vessel. On the app, there's a new personal cup option added to the customization button. Starbucks says the cups must be clean and less than 40 ounces. These changes are part of a movement to shift away from single-use plastics. A look now at your first one forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Yeah, short-term uh, weather's pretty quiet. Uh, we're actually going to see some sunshine for tomorrow, which would be nice. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Look for partly sunny skies. It'll be a little colder, though. High temperatures right around 30 degrees. Uh, there'll be some chances for flurries over the weekend. Saturday into Sunday morning seems to be the time period most likely, but that shouldn't amount to very much. But then we turn our attention to a more significant snow from late Monday night through Tuesday night uh, across southern Wisconsin. And we do have a first one weather alert day in the forecast for that time for accumulating snowfall. Right now we're thinking a moderate snowfall and uh, windy conditions as well. Let's take a look and see how the computer models have changed on this. Uh, first of all, we look at the snow depth. There's not much. I mean, we have light snow on the ground an inch or two in most spots. Northern Wisconsin, very little snow on the ground. But that should change next week by this time. Future track from the European computer model. Yesterday it had the snow right at the Mississippi River by noon. Notice today, 6 p.m., still out to the west. A mix of rain and snow farther to the south, but this model now showing more in the way of snow. Arriving late Tuesday night, or late Monday night into Tuesday morning. Snows through uh, much of the day on Tuesday. The heaviest snow probably Tuesday afternoon into early Tuesday evening. It starts to wind down by midnight down to flurries by early on Wednesday morning, and then everything shifts off to the east, and it's all over with by noon on Wednesday. That computer model now showing a general four to six inch snow. Yesterday was kind of a two to four locally, three or four uh, inch snow. Now it's a little bit higher. Some of that snow from the south moving farther north, uh, kind of as we expected if the storm intensifies a little more than forecast. The GFS computer model from the U.S. government 
early Tuesday morning, the snow still south of the Wisconsin Illinois state line, but by 6 a.m. we start to see light snow overspread much of southern Wisconsin. That continues through the morning and then it starts to pick up in intensity by Tuesday evening. This favors more of eastern Wisconsin and northern Illinois and then everything winds down by early on Wednesday morning and heads off to the east by Wednesday afternoon. This model showing very similar snow totals, maybe even a little bit more, again from Milwaukee southward into Chicago, but if this moves farther north, our totals would have to come up as well. Add in the wind, and that's why we have the first warm weather alert day in the forecast. Plan your night. Skies will turn partly cloudy. That will allow temperatures to drop off a little more. We start out in the upper 20s by 9 p.m. In the middle 20s by uh, midnight, we get into the early morning hours tomorrow, down to the lower 20s, and probably look for low temperatures in the upper teens to around 20 degrees by early on Thursday morning. Uh, plan your night across Dane County, low of 19 in Oregon, 20 in Cambridge, and 19 in Marshall. The skies clear out overnight. Rest of southern Wisconsin, low temperatures ranging from 23 in Janesville to 19 in Baraboo and 16 in Camp Douglas. Tomorrow, look for partly sunny skies, a little colder than today, high temperature at 30, first warm 7 to 10 day forecast, 35, a little more cloud cover on Friday, flurry chances Saturday into Sunday morning. Monday should be dry. The snow arrives late Monday night into Tuesday and Tuesday night, winds down as a few flurries early on Wednesday morning. Then some more snow showers on Thursday and notice those temperatures dropping off the end of next week with some snow on the ground. That'll make a big difference in our high temperatures and low temperatures as well. In our first warm traffic, uh, not a great day on the Beltline. Uh, eastbound on the Beltline, we've got some delays around Monona Drive, westbound from around Verona Road, almost all the way to John Nolan Drive, and an accident northbound on I-3990 at the Beltline Interchange. Right now, a 20, well, about almost a 25-minute trip either way on the Beltline between University Avenue and the interstate from Sun Prairie to downtown is a quick 17 minutes today. That same trip outbound will take you 19 minutes. U.S. 12 Middle in the Sox City is 17 minutes, and I-3990 from the Beltline to Janesville will take you 25 minutes. That's your News 3 Now first warrant traffic. Gary, thank you. Next on News 3 Now at 5, how one man who survived a tragic car accident is starting the new year with a new outlook on life. That and more after the break. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. At RG Heating and Air Conditioning, our promise to you is 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Guaranteed service, repairs, and replacements. Installing quality train equipment. Trust your home with RG Heating and AC. Oh, the weather. What's the chance of rain tomorrow? Ooh, 80%. I make it rain. I make it rain. Speaking of making it rain, at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison, we have an average 95% payout, which leads you to more chances of playing longer and more chances to win big. <laughs> Play longer, win more, chances are you're gonna like it. Ho Chunk Gaming Madison. To everyone who appreciates a handcrafted meal, are you ready for a taste of Wisconsin? Butterburger's cooked fresh, just the way you like. The way you love. Definitely love. And our thick and creamy frozen custard, we make it for you all throughout the day. All day. All day, every day. Put it in the extra work and not cutting corners. It takes a little longer. But it's how we've always done it at Culver's. Because making your meal with care shows how much we care. From Wisconsin with love. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, farm is in our name, so you know we're animal experts, offering the quality pet food, supplies, and advice you need for healthy, happy pets. Right now, save $2 on all Blaine's Farm and Fleet dog and cat food. 40-pound bags of Blaine's Wild Bird Food, just $15.99. Keep you and your pets warm with Easy Heat Wood Fuel Pellets, just $4.99 a bag. Plus, order select pet and animal prescriptions online at blainesrx.com. Find value at Blaine's Farm and we got the house! <laughs> we did! Pods handles the driving. Pack at your pace, store your things until you're ready, then we deliver to your new home, across town or across the country. Pods, your personal moving and storage team. Stella uses AT&T for her internet and mobile service. Abby has Spectrum One. The difference is big. With AT&T, Stella pays a lot more. I do? It's $110 a month for AT&T internet and an AT&T unlimited extra line. Plus monthly fees. Ouch. 
With Spectrum One, Abby gets big savings. Spectrum Internet with the most reliable internet speeds. It's really fast. Advanced Wi-Fi for enhanced privacy and security. And an unlimited mobile line with nationwide 5G. All with no added taxes or hidden fees. Now you can get Spectrum Internet for $49.99 a month, plus free advanced Wi-Fi and a free unlimited mobile line. That's a good deal. I know. With Spectrum One, Abby is saving big. Over $75 a month. That's over $900 in savings. So Stella, what do you think? I'm switching to Spectrum. Spectrum One is a big deal. Call 800-872-0180. Visit Spectrum.com or a Spectrum store today. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. One man's medical success story is bringing him into 2024 with a new perspective on life. And today, our Maddie Heimsch followed him and his medical team through the story in Rock County. When David Potter lost control of his car in May of 2023, it flipped several times, leaving him nearly immobile. Today, he credits the team at Mercy Health for his recovery. It's seven months later and I have full movement. It, it's just been a nonstop blessing. It was Memorial Day when rainy conditions caused Potter to slide off the road. First responders needed to use a crane to flip his vehicle right side up and get him out of the wreckage. Potter's shoulder was ripped six inches out of its socket and his skull was significantly fractured. He sustained internal bleeding throughout his body. He believed his life was over. There's no end here. This isn't going to get better. You know, but that was, I had already given up. But when he started rehabilitative care at Mercy Care in Janesville, he and his doctors were equally amazed with his progress. The easy route would have just been to throw in the towel in that situation, right? On average, 532 people die each year on Wisconsin roads, and more than 26,000 sustain serious injuries from crashes. Potter says he considers himself a safe driver. He says people don't realize how quickly things can change on the road and how intensive the recovery process is. I was, I was hell bent on getting back to normal. Potter attended therapy at Mercy Care several times a week for months. He says he'll continue his exercises and hopes to get stronger with time. For now, he says he's just grateful to make it to 2024. In Janesville, I'm Maddie Heimsch, News 3 Now. And we'll have a final check of your first foreign forecast after a short break. Join Dr. Ashish M. Ravel on January 11th at 5.30 p.m. to learn about the causes of shoulder pain and pain relief options. To register for the free online educational talk, visit StoughtonHealth.com and click on Classes and Events. The bag is back at Menards. Get 15% off everything you can fit in the bag, from household items and pet toys to power tools and even your favorite snacks. Percent off everything you can fit in the bag. This deal won't last long. Hurry in to get your bag and see how much you can save. Still ends January 14th. Save big money at the Nards. Want to instantly look more attractive, years younger, and even healthier? The solution is whiter teeth. Even teeth that are just a little yellow are a problem. They rob your appearance, make you look older, and can hurt your confidence. But you love coffee and tea, maybe even wine or smoking, and all of them stain your teeth and make them yellow. It's time you discovered Power Swabs, the fast five-minute revolutionary treatment. The first time I tried it, I was so surprised. My husband was so excited that he wanted to run out and get it. He said, what have you been trying? I said, well, I've tried this product called Power Swab. And he said, I can't believe how white your teeth are. So from that point on, I've been sold. My absolute favorite thing was how easy it was. It takes literally less than five minutes. Power Swabs has made a really big difference in lifting the stains and making my smile more beautiful. Power Swabs are guaranteed to whiten your teeth up to two shades after the first application and after five-minute daily treatments for the next week, your teeth will be an average of six shades whiter. Plus, unlike other whitening methods, power swabs will whiten natural teeth and remove stains from veneers, bonding, caps, and crowns. Power swabs are easier on your gums and cause less sensitivity. I've used strips and trays, and they both gave me really sensitive teeth. With the power swabs, I've been using them for a week and nothing. I had hot coffee this morning and ice cream last night and no problems. <laughs> it's time to discover what you've been missing. Now, it's your turn to get started with power swabs. I like my smile. I like my smile after finishing the power swabs. This is a power swab smile. This is a power swap smile. 
This is a power swap smile. Call, go online, or scan the code on your screen right now to receive 50% off this new year. You'll also receive the Power Swab Stain Out Quick Stick absolutely free. And in addition, you will also get free shipping. Order right now and take the Power Swab's five minute challenge. If your teeth aren't a full two shades wider after your first application, simply return it and you'll get your money back. Join Dr. Ashish M. Ravel on January 11th at 5.30 p.m. to learn about the causes of shoulder pain and pain relief options. To register for the free online educational talk, visit StoughtonHealth.com and click on Classes and Events. We've got a lot of news coming up. Our series, Guns in America, continues. Tonight, we look at firearms safety laws across the country and how they can protect children in the United States from accidental shootings. That and more news tonight here on the CBS Evening News. And then coming up tonight at 6, the housing crisis in Madison continues, especially for one apartment complex that notified residents just days before Christmas that they needed to find a new home. That and more ahead in the next half hour. Twin giant panda cubs Rui Bao and Hui Bao will officially meet the public tomorrow. That's according to Everland Resort in Yeonjin, uh, South Korea today. The twin giant pandas were born July 7th last summer. They're both female. They weighed 180 grams and 140 grams at birth. That's about a third of a pound. Well, they now weigh about 24 pounds. At six months old, they love to follow around their mother. And there they are. Bamboo. Following mom. Just loading Bamboo up, shoots, yep. growing every day. Gary's back. He's got a final check of the forecast. Very nice out there right now. Uh, skies are actually starting to turn partly cloudy. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam. No snow around here. There were a couple of flurries in eastern portions of Dodge County, east of Beaver Dam, but those look like they have dissipated. Uh, current temperatures right now, right around freezing. Madison just above freezing. Janesville in the mid 30s. Uh, most areas between about 30 and 35 degrees here in Dane County. 33 Deerfield, 33 in Stoughton, and 34 degrees in Belleville. Look for partly cloudy skies this evening. Temperatures dropping off about 26 by 10 p.m. But again, we'll watch that winter storm have latest updates at 6. We'll keep an eye on it. Thank you, Gary. Thanks for joining us. We're back in 30 minutes for News Now at 6. CBS Evening News is next.